if your cat's been spayed but is still calling, is still vocalising a lot, then, you know, what's that all about? Why are they still in season even when they don't have any ovaries? So our next question is from Deborah Nyla who says, help please, I've already spayed my queen but she still meows and continues to do that for seven to eight days. It then stops for a week or so um, before again starting up with her meowling. Please help me with this issue. So to me, it sounds very much like this is a female cat that's calling like she's on heat and is looking to attract a mate. She's trying to get pregnant. And this can happen kind of in a spayed cat, if you like, for two reasons. And the first is that the cat actually isn't spayed. So that may sound a bit silly, but you know, a lot of cats are rehomed either through shelters or through um, paper adverts or something like that, online adverts. Um, and it might be that actually there's the incorrect understanding that the operation has been carried out when actually the cat is still entire and has never been operated on. So, you know, that's certainly a possibility depending on the history of the cat. But in other situations, um, what can happen is when they are spayed, then a piece of ovary, a little piece of ovary is left behind so the ovary hasn't been removed in its entirety. Only a really tiny piece needs to be left behind for a cat to develop this problem. They'll then come into heat as they normally would. Um, the ovary or the remnant of the ovary, the leftover piece of ovary will grow in size um, and yeah, the hormonal changes within a cat during calling and during um, during being on season will be the same as if they hadn't been spayed at all. And this is a condition known as ovarian remnant syndrome. Now, there are a number of ways we can go about trying to diagnose this. A hormone blood test can confirm this is the problem, although it's not always 100% reliable. Um, and there are other tests that we can do to try and get a, a more accurate diagnosis if that does come, come back inconclusive. So we can um, run a vaginal cytology, so looking at the cells under the microscope to look for evidence of being on heat. Potentially we can use ultrasound, now that is going to um, need to have an experienced ultrasonographer, an experienced practitioner doing that and it's potentially not going to see that even when it is the problem but that's certainly an option and if you do see something then that's going to be um, diagnostic. And there is also a more complex blood test that can be run. Um, the problem with that is that involves giving an injection of a substance that a lot of vet clinics aren't going to carry. So. You know, those are the ways we can go about diagnosing it. But equally, if we consider um, a typical, the typical signs in a cat that's on heat um, and there's no other causes of that, then we can be fairly certain or as certain as we can that uh, ovarian remnant syndrome is the problem and that will justify going to surgery to try and remove the little piece of ovary that's been left. That said, we do need to consider other conditions that can cause increased vocalization, and they can include things like stress, um, pain, senility even. Uh, so, you know, very much is gonna depend on the history of the patient. You know, if they're an older cat who was spayed when they were younger and has never had any problems until they're, you know, over a long period of time, then really it's not gonna be ovarian remnant syndrome. There's gonna be something else because they would come into heat every year. So it's more, this is more for cats who are younger cats um, or maybe who have just been rehomed, um, who have been on the, kind of in the family for, for about a year or less. Now, if ovarian remnant syndrome is confirmed with the test or if there's no other problem, like I say, then really we need to go to exploratory surgery to find and remove the piece of ovary that's previously been left behind. There's no other treatment that we can give. There's no medical treatment that we can give, you know, to, to eliminate the calling behavior um, and eliminate those kind of hormones that are going on within a cat um, for any length of time. And you know there are there are certain benefits of, of having the ovaries removed. So that includes things like pyometra. Um, it reduces stress. It reduces attracting entire tomcats to the area, maybe coming into the house. So there's definite benefits of removing that little piece of ovary that's been left. And then I'll just end by saying that this really is a very uncommon complication of spaying cats. And so I would definitely say, if possible, then talk to the original operating vet clinic about this because they may be willing to do the follow-up testing and surgery free of charge. You know, it's not something that really we would expect to be happening as a regular complication of this surgery. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.